Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everybody. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to discuss the physiology of the exocrine pancreas, liver, and gall bladder. The objectives of the current lecture are to describe the anatomy and histology of the pancreas, to describe the composition and function of the pancreatic juice, to describe the location, anatomy, histology, and functions of the liver and gallbladder. Uh, the pancreas is a two-in-one uh, organ that lies in the curvature of the duodenum. It is a retroperitoneal structure. It has a head, a neck, body, and tail. It, as I said, it is two-in-one uh, organ, which means that it has endocrine part and an exocrine part. As I said, the pancreas is composed or contains endocrine and exocrine uh, tissues. 99% of the pancreatic mass is composed of an exocrine tissue in the form of pancreatic acini that uh, produce and release pancreatic juice. This juice will be collected or will flow through a network of ducts that finally will empty into the duodenum. The endocrine part, which represents 1% of the pancreatic mass, is form of pancreatic islets or islets of Langerhans. The islets are mainly composed of beta cells that produce the hormone insulin. The beta cells are centrally located in the islets, as you can see in this figure. And we have the next uh, most common uh, cells are the alpha cells that are located peripherally in the pancreatic uh, islets. And these alpha cells produce the hormone glucagon. In addition to the alpha and beta cells, we have few other cells called the delta cells that produce somatostatin and the F cells. As I said, the pancreatic juice uh, will be produced by the pancreatic acini. It will flow through the ducts and finally it will reach the pancreatic duct or the main pancreatic duct that will join the common bile duct to form the ampulla of water that will open into the second part of the duodenum and this opening is guarded by the sphincter of Odi. So the pancreas lies uh, posterior to the greater cur curvature of the stomach. The pancreatic juice is secreted via the pancreatic duct and the accessory duct into the small intestine. The pancreatic duct joins the common bile duct and enters the duodenum at the hepatopancreatic ampulla or ampulla of water. Histologically, the pancreas is composed of uh, pancreatic acini, as I said, 99% of pancreatic cells or pancreatic tissue is in the form of pancreatic acini, and only 1% of cells are pancreatic islets or islets of Langerhans. The pancreatic acini represent the exocrine part of the pancreas. They secrete pancreatic juice, which is a mixture of fluid and digestive enzymes. It is mainly water, bicarbonate, and digestive enzymes that help in the digestion of food or chyme in the small intestine. The pancreatic islets, or the endocrine of the uh, part of the pancreas, secretes hormones like glucagon, insulin, somatostatin, and pancreatic polypeptide. Glucagon is a product of alpha cells, insulin, beta cells, uh, somatostatin, delta cells, and pancreatic polypeptide from the uh, F cells.
the pancreatic juice <clears throat> two different types of cells produce the exocrine pancreatic juice or the exocrine pancreatic secretion so two cells contribute to the pancreatic juice we have the acinar cells these are cells that are or that form the acini and we have the cells or ductular or ductular cells that line the pancreatic ducts and ductules so the acinar cells grouped into lobules and they contain granules and these granules in turn contain digestive enzymes we call this granules the zymogen granules as we can see here in the figure the apical part of the uh, acinar cells contains the zymogen granules that are formed within the cell and discharged by exocytosis from the apices of the cells into the lumens of the pancreatic acini then into the small pancreatic ducts the other cell that contributes uh, to pancreatic secretion or pancreatic juice are the ductular and ductal epithelial cells these are the cells that line the pancreatic ductules and pancreatic ducts and these cells mainly secrete an alkaline fluid fluid which is very rich in bicarbonate the pancreatic juice flows along the main pancreatic duct which empties into the duodenum along with the common bile duct what is the composition or what are the features of the pancreatic juice uh, every day the pancreas produces 1.2 to 1.5 liters of pancreatic juice which has a pH of 7.5 to 8.5 it is clear colorless liquid consisting of mainly water like other fluids in the body sodium bicarbonate which is the main ion and it acts as a buffer of for the stomach acidic chyme the pancreatic juice also is very rich in enzymes and these enzymes are as follows the pancreatic amylase which is uh, which has a function similar to the salivary amylase it digests starch we have protolytic enzymes like trypsin which is secreted as trypsinogen in an inactive form and chemotrypsin secreted as uh, chemotrypsinogen again it is inactive form carboxypeptidase and elastase both of them are also secreted as inactive enzymes in the form of pro carboxypeptidase and pro elastase another enzyme present in the uh, pancreatic juice and is the product of the acinar cells is the pancreatic lipase moreover the pancreatic juice contains ribonuclease and deoxyribonuclease they digest rna and dna respectively that are present in the cytoplasm and the nucleus of the cell how the pancreatic secretion is regulated as usual we have neural regulation and hormonal regulation so pancreatic secretion is regulated by the parasympathetic nervous system again it is stimulatory so activity or uh, action potential running through the parasympathetic fibers will cause or will stimulate pancreatic secretion and hormones we have two main hormones that act on the pancreas or the exocrine part of the pancreas where they stimulate secretion of different qualities of pancreatic juice cholecystokinin the presence of fat and proteins in the duodenum will stimulate the release of cholecystokinin cholecystokinin will act on the acinar cells of the exocrine pancreas uh, to stimulate the secretion of enzyme rich pancreatic juice the other important hormone that acts on the pancreas is secretin as we knew from the previous lecture the presence of acids 
or acidic chyme in the duodenum will stimulate the release of secretin or the hormone secretin from S cells in the duodenum. This will stimulate the ductal and ductular cells that line the ductules and ducts or the pancreatic ducts and in turn will increase the secretion of aqueous bicarbonate rich pancreatic juice. So cholecystokinin will stimulate mainly the release of pancreatic juice that is rich in enzymes while secretin will stimulate the release of pancreatic juice that is rich in water and bicarbonate. So here we can see a summary of how acid and fat or protein stimulate or regulate pancreatic secretion. If we focus here, fat and protein products in the duodenum lumen will stimulate uh, cholecystokinase, uh, cholecystokinase release from the duodenal mucosa. It will be released into the blood, carried to the pancreatic acinar cells. This will stimulate the secretion of pancreatic digestive enzymes into the duodenal lumen. And this, these enzymes in turn will digest the proteins and lipids. On the other hand, the presence of acidic chyme in the duodenal lumen will stimulate the release of secretin from the duodenal mucosa. Secretin will enter into the bloodstream, carried to the pancreatic duct cells and pancreatic duct cells open stimulation will increase the secretion of aqueous uh, sodium bicarbonate solution into the duodenal lumen and this bicarbonate will neutralize the acidic chyme. Now let's talk about the liver and the gallbladder. Uh, the liver is the largest internal organ. The largest organ in the body is the skin, but the largest internal organ is the liver. It has a mass of 1.5 kilograms. It is covered by peritoneum and it has a capsule and two lobes, right and left lobes, and we have larger right lobe compared to the left lobe. The gallbladder is a pear-shaped sac that is located in a depression on the posterior surface of the liver. As you can see here in the, the figure, we have liver with two lobes, small left lobe, large right lobe, and the gallbladder is just lying on the posterior surface of the liver. Histologically, the liver is composed of cords of hepatocytes arranged radially around the central vein. These uh, hepatocytes, in, uh, arrangement of hepatocytes is called hepatic laminae, as we can see here in the figure. And they are arranged radially around the central vein. The center of the hepatic lobule is the central vein. And at the corners of the hepatic globule, we have the portal triad, which is uh, which contains the bile duct, because bile will be formed or is formed by hepatocytes. It will run uh, to the periphery of the uh, hepatic globule to drain into the bile duct. Also in the portal triad, we can see branch of the hepatic artery and the branch of the hepatic portal vein. So bile will flow from the center towards the periphery while blood, both oxygenated blood coming from the heart and deoxygenated blood coming from the portal vein will run from the periphery of the hepatic lobule towards the central vein. The, there are sinusoids separating the hepatic laminae. We call them the hepatic sinusoids. Here we can see a 3D uh, figure or drawing of part of the hepatic lobule and we can see the central vein and uh, as you see the arrows indicate the flow of blood in, in the hepatic lobule 
from the portal triad or the periphery of the hepatic globule towards the central vein while bile flows in the opposite direction from the center towards the portal triad also i want to attract your attention that there are macrophages macrophages or fixed macrophages in the liver, uh, liver um, called the copper cells so the liver is made of lobules lobules are made of hepatocytes arranged around the central vein hepatic sinusoids they are very leaky capillaries uh, they run between the hepatic laminae the copper cells or satellite reticuloendothelial cells are fixed macrophages are liver fixed macrophages blood supply uh, to the hepatic lobule is from hepatic artery that carries blood which is rich in oxygen and hepatic portal vein that carries blood from the uh, uh, from the alimentary canal mainly the small intestine and it is rich in nutrients blood leaves the liver via the hepatic vein as you study the anatomy branches of hepatic portal vein hepatic artery bile duct form the portal triad that is present at the corners of the hepatic lobules what are the functions of the liver the liver has many functions and these functions are very important and very vital for homeostasis one of them is carbohydrate metabolism number two lipid metabolism and then also protein metabolism in the form of deamination amino acids and uh, deamination of amino acids and synthesis of most plasma proteins these metabolic functions you will study them in further details in biochemistry inshallah the liver also is the place where drugs and hormones are processed uh, the liver excretes bilirubin that is derived from the heme ring of the aged red blood cells it is also the place where bile salts are produced bile salts are very important for the digestion and absorption of lipid so bile salts uh, will flow through the bile and will be used in the small intestine for the emulsification and absorption of lipids the liver is the storage site for glycogen vitamins like vitamin a vitamin b12 vitamin d e and k and minerals like iron the copper cells that are present in the liver are able to perform phagocytosis so the copper cells of the liver phagocytize aged red blood cells white blood cells and some bacteria uh, the liver is the site of activation of vitamin D. The skin, liver and kidneys together they participate in producing the active form of vitamin D. The product or the secretion of the liver is called bile. Hepatocytes in the liver secrete about 800 to 1000 milliliter of bile per day it is a yellow brownish or olive green liquid and has a ph of 7.6 to 8.6 because it is rich in bicarbonate so it is an alkaline uh, secretion it is composed mainly of water bile salts that are important for the emulsification and absorption of lipids cholesterol lecithin which is one of the phospholipids bile pigments like bilirubin and several ions now let's uh, talk or let's uh, discuss the function of bile salts in, in more details emulsification 
I said bile salts are important for the emulsification. What is emulsification? Emulsification is the process by which fat globules are broken into smaller pieces. So when we break large fat globules into smaller pieces, the total surface area of those small pieces is much larger than that single fat globule. So this will increase the surface area on which the lipase will act. So the smaller pieces or the bile salts are able to break down large fat globules into smaller pieces because they reduce the surface tension of the fat globules by the detergent action or by their detergent actions. Then the bile salts participate in the formation of micelles. So here we have uh, we have a fat uh, droplet that was uh, a large fat globule was broken into smaller fat droplets and here we have one fat droplet one fat droplet upon which the lipase is acting to release the free fatty acids and the monoglycerides now the second important function of the bile salts is the formation of micelles the micelle is a complex uh, with uh, complexes with fatty acids and cholesterol to enhance the absorption of fatty acids so whatever is released from the fat uh, droplet will enter into the micelle the micelle will approach or will become will come close to the mucosa of the small intestine to deliver the digestion or the lipid digestion product for absorption so micelles will help or enhance the absorption of fatty acids very important uh, note is after performing their function bile salts are recycled and this is called the enterohepatic uh, circulation of the bile salts so at, at the, in the terminal part uh, of the small intestine and to some extent in the large intestine bile salts are reabsorbed and taken back to the hepatocytes or to the liver re-secreted again into the bile to further help in the digestion and absorption of lipids uh, what is or what are the components of the biliary tree or what is the path followed by the bile that is released from the hepatocytes bile canaliculi that are present between the cords of the hepatocytes uh, bile will flow through the bile canaliculi to the bile ducts and then to the right and left hepatic ducts that uh, drain the right and left lobes of the liver respectively right and left hepatic ducts will join to form the common hepatic duct then the common hepatic duct will join the cystic duct to form the common bile duct the common bile duct will join the pancreatic duct at the ampulla of water so the right hepatic duct will join the left hepatic duct to form the common hepatic duct as we can see here in this figure then the common hepatic duct will be joined with the cystic duct coming from the gallbladder to form the common bile duct and finally the pancreatic duct will join at the sphincter of Audi to open into the duodenum bile between meals uh, bile is stored and concentrated in the gallbladder bile doesn't flow to the duodenum continuously it flows to the duodenum just during meal and shortly after meal but between meals the bile is uh, stored or diverted through the cystic duct to the gallbladder where it is stored and concentrated now what are the functions of the of the gallbladder the functions of the, the gallbladder are the storage 
concentration and discharge of bile into the small intestine bile is delivered from the gallbladder into the small intestine uh, after meal due to the action of the hormone called cystokinin bile is normally concentrated about five folds and it can be concentrated up to a maximum of 20 folds because the gallbladder has a certain limit or certain capacity it cannot store bile as it is to store the bile between meals the, that bile should be concentrated to accommodate its volume uh, bile leaving the liver in the hepatic duct between meals is diverted into the gallbladder as a consequence of the closure of the sphincter of odi. The gallbladder musculature relaxes between meals to receive the bile. Hepatic biliary secretion between meals is about 450 ml. However, the human gallbladder can accommodate uh, up can accommodate to hold 20 to 50 ml of bile so the bile the human gallbladder cannot accommodate that volume of 450 to be able to accommodate that volume the bile should be concentrated and its volume reduced to 20 to 50 milliliter of bile So what are the regulators of bile secretion? When the chyme enters the duodenum and it contains fat, this fat and the chyme will stimulate the CCK cells that are present in the duodenal mucosa. So cells from the intestinal mucosa secrete the hormone called cystokinin into the bloodstream. This hormone will circulate via the blood and will reach the gallbladder. Cholecystokinin will stimulate the muscular layer of the gallbladder wall to contract. Bile passes down the cystic duct and common bile duct to the duodenum and the hepatopancreatic sphincter or sphincter of odi relaxes and bile will enter into the duodenum. Uh, with this slide about the regulation of bile secretion into the duodenum by the hormone called cystokinin, we finish uh, this lecture about the uh, pancreas or the exocrine pancreas, the liver and the gallbladder. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please uh, send them to me via email. Goodbye.